This podcast is brought to you by the Association for Coaching, an international professional body which is advancing coaching in business and society worldwide. I'm your host, Rob Lawrence. In this new series, I talk to coaches, leaders and experts who share their passion for this incredible profession and their knowledge of how to do marketing well. Our ambition is to contribute to the development of the coaching profession and to bring you some new ideas, insights and strategies so you can create an impact with your coaching and marketing. Welcome to another episode in the Make Time for Marketing series. My guest today is known in some circles as Mr. LinkedIn. He's regarded as one of the world's top experts on LinkedIn and has trained thousands of business professionals since 2008. He hosts an award-winning podcast, LinkedIn Formed, and is also an author and keynote speaker. I'm hoping by the end of today's episode, if you're not already using LinkedIn, you will be. And if you are already using it with a coaching practice or business in mind, you'll be taking a lot of the guesswork out of what you're doing so that you can start using it to get the results that you're looking for in the least amount of time. So it gives me great pleasure to have on the show today, Mr. LinkedIn, Mark Williams. Mark, welcome. Thank you very much, Rob. It's uh, it's good to be here. Great to have you on. So before we get stuck in, I've been asking every guest ahead of our chat, what it is that marketing means to you or what does marketing mean to you? Yeah, I mean, um, it's probably not a very positive thing. <laughs> it's probably not what you want to hear. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> in many respects, I've been through various stages of my career where marketing has been a bigger deal to me, but uh, I've kind of evolved um if that's the right word that that kind of assumes that uh, where i am now is better than where i was before which wouldn't be the case for everyone but is for <laughs> yeah. me i'm automatically suspicious of marketing professionals in that uh, i i kind of always feel that someone that's focused on marketing is trying to trying to persuade me to do something that i don't want to do <laughs> and i know some people would would view that as being sort of what sales people do but i kind of mm. see uh, marketing people like that and um, I guess my background has been that uh, I've evolved from marketing as a tool to persuade to relationships as a tool to influence and work with people. So, and I know that's often people's view of marketing as well, but that's kind of where I sit with it in that yeah. um, I'm, I'm all about the networking and less about the marketing. Yeah. We'll definitely get into that today. Um, perhaps for our listener, a little bit more background about you would be nice. How did you get into doing what it is that you do today? Yeah, I mean, long story short, because it is a bit of a long story, but before I did what I do now, I used to work in recruitment and um, I actually ran a recruitment business for about 12 years. During that time, LinkedIn came along. So, And obviously, in the early days of LinkedIn, it was primarily a recruitment tool, really. It was recruiters that were the first kind of uh, cohort to pick up on LinkedIn and start using it seriously. And that was very much the case with uh, with my company, the company that I was running. Uh, but I had a lot of people much younger than me who were much more comfortable with um, online networking or social networking. And, um, and so they were using it and me being control freak, managing director, I wasn't happy about that because they were using a tool that I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah. And um, and I kind of had an old fashioned view of you, you can't be making money sitting staring at a computer screen, can you? <laughs> Get on the phone and start talking to people. And, um, so it was really uh, born out of a, a need to control and understand exactly what my uh, my team were using. And um, and from that, I realised that actually they were onto something uh, but then I realised that they, although they were onto something, they weren't really using it in any kind of coordinated way and nobody's actually sat down and thought about how we should best use it. So I uh, I looked for someone who could train us because pretty much every other tool uh, that we used in the business we were trained to use or I made sure people were trained to use properly and I couldn't find anyone. Um, this is way back in the day, early days of LinkedIn. And... Uh, and I guess a seedling of an idea uh, was uh, was planted at that stage. And um, a few years later, for reasons I won't bore you with, that's a long story in itself, I, uh, I decided to set up on my own as the first LinkedIn trainer in the UK and one of the first in the world. There were only like a handful of people by that stage who had started uh, doing LinkedIn training. And it was great because... Uh, it really suited me, actually. I, I'm, I find when I look back at my career, I'm probably at my best when I'm pushing against a wave 
and sort of trying to push water uphill, really. I remember conversations with people about LinkedIn training and them saying to me, why on earth would anybody want to learn or need to learn how to use LinkedIn? This is illogical. <laughs> and uh, uh, nobody could see the benefit of it at all. And here we are today, sort of coming up to 14 years later. Wow. And um, there's LinkedIn trainers everywhere on every street corner, pretty much, many of which making a very good living. So there's many things in my life and career that I've got wrong, but that wasn't one of them. So yeah. um, I'm still here all that time later. What I was hearing there, Mark, which was really inspiring, is that you were thinking about things perhaps more strategically than others at the time. And there's a tool that you've identified that you thought actually apply some strategy to this and you'll probably start getting some really good results is what I was hearing there. So we'll get into some of that today, definitely. But I'm mm. curious, I mean, that must have taken quite a leap of faith on your part because these platforms sometimes come and go. And that was some 14 years ago. So you know, can you remember the time where you thought, right, this is it, I'm on and this is worth diving into? Yeah, I mean, I can because that it was at a stage where I, as I started speaking, I mean, initially, I just kind of focused on people who were in the same sort of job that I'd been in. And um, and I was knocking on their door and saying, you you no doubt are in a situation where you've got people working for you using this thing called LinkedIn. You've no idea what it is. And perhaps you might want to think about training them to use it and I can help you with that. And that was a very open door to push, to be honest with you. It was quite easy. Most people were very responsive to that. But it wasn't mainstream at that point. And so the only reason why I'm still here today doing this is because it went mainstream. And there was a period of time where, you know, Facebook was gathering uh, incredible pace and, and going, uh, Facebook started after LinkedIn, but overtook it in no time and became, you know, the major social network out there. Um, but kind of lost itself a little bit at a certain point where, you know, all the Cambridge Analytica stuff, you may remember. And there was a, a, a time when people started to realise they weren't getting organic reach from link, from uh, Facebook posts anymore. And so a real kind of cohort of people that were experienced at generating business through social networks uh, kind of were looking around for something else. And LinkedIn was already a successful business with a good subscription model. So, you know, it was already a very stable business, uh, a profit-making business. And so a lot of people came over to the platform on that stage and started, they're probably on LinkedIn anyway, but they started using it for business generation purposes. And that was probably the step change really for me when it became mainstream. And um, yeah, for years I'd been sort of battling against this mindset that people had that it's a recruiting site. And, and very much saying to people, look, it's not that, you know, you're massively underestimating this site. If you think that it's about recruitment, that's a tiny part of what can be done here. And it was around that time that that, that message really started to, to become more mainstream and people started to really understand that. And that's when uh, I think the kind of penny dropped for, for most people. Well, let's get into that and talk a little bit about the mindset behind LinkedIn. And I'm not going to make any assumptions here. I know that our listener may be somebody new to the world of coaching or maybe indeed a very experienced coach, but either way, they may be, they may have had some experience with LinkedIn, uh, but they may have no idea what we're talking about here, or they may have just dabbled or come across LinkedIn. So maybe we could start, Mark, with some of the benefits in your opinion in terms of wh why is LinkedIn such a powerful tool, and and maybe then we can talk a bit about the mindset in terms of what's what's the right approach here in terms of how to get the best out of it. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's a powerful tool because pretty much everyone you want to do business with is on it. Now, that doesn't mean they're all active, um, but there's a good chance that they might be. And increasingly, those chances are getting better and better year by year as more and more people get dragged into becoming more active. So look at it as there's an opportunity here because there's a load of networking going on. Um, and you can join in or you can stand on the sidelines. And so the best analogy would be that you are, I don't know, let's say you're, you're out in the at a meeting um, at a hotel, let's say somewhere, one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone, and you finish that meeting and uh, you're heading back to the office and you walk past this room, big room, uh, doors wide open, and on the front of the door, a little sign there by the door and it says, 
open networking meeting for X professionals. Now, X is whatever you specialize in, right? Uh, whatever your market is, whatever your niche is, that's what the X represents in this analogy. And so you've got a choice. You, you, you've not got a meeting to get back to. You're just going back to the office. You've got work to do for sure, but uh, you've got something pressing that you need to get back to. And your choice is you can just go back to the office if you want, or you can walk in and start talking to people, right? And that's LinkedIn. They're in there, they're talking, and more and more people are going to walk past that door, and more and more people are going to see that sign. More and more people are going to go, oh, maybe I ought to get involved in these. These are my type of people. And that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger uh, week by week and month by month. Those that went in that room early are gaining real benefit from it. But so many people stop, look in there, go, oh, there's a lot of people in there and there's a lot of conversations going on. And I don't know, I'm a bit intimidated by that. And they walk on. And sometimes that intimidation, of course, when we move out of that analogy is I don't understand I'm not a social networking type of person. You know, I don't use Facebook. I don't use Twitter. That's all beyond me. Um, technical stuff or it's for youngsters or however many excuses there are out there. I've probably heard them all. But the bottom line is you're in business and you want to do business with people. And if you want to get into that marketplace where all those people are talking and they're all engaging with each other, you got to step inside the door and start getting involved. That's the benefit that exists to become more visible, to build more relationships, to become better known, to be referred more. All of those things happen if you are prepared to walk in that door and, uh, and start networking with people. And yeah, that kind of moves me on to the mindset side, because one of the things I've learned about this platform over the years that I've been training people is there's a lot of people when they first come, they walk in that door, go back to that analogy, they walk in that door and they go, right, wow, a room full of potential clients, I'm going to start selling. So they walk in there and they go up to people and they say, now let me tell you about how I can help you. you know, th I'm a coach and I specialize in this and this is how I help my clients and da 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 da. And of course, nobody would do that, right? Nobody would do that in a face-to-face -face situation. Um, it'd just be embarrassing, frankly. I mean, you know, I I've occasionally met people like that networking, but very rarely. But when they go online, they just become a different animal. They just kind of lose that, the, the good inhibition, if you like, of holding back and actually small talk and getting to know people. They lose all of that. They like to press buttons and just think that they're in there to sell their market, sell their what they do, right? And, um, and that's wrong. So when I, when I talk about mindset, what I'm talking about is a shift from a marketing mindset to a networking mindset. And it's actually a relatively simple thing to do, but it is a mindset. So it's a case of going, when I'm on LinkedIn, I'm networking. I'm not marketing. Don't think of it like that. Now, obviously, if you're a marketing professional and you're running a company page for a, an organization, then OK, that's different. But for most people who want to get success out of LinkedIn, you need to approach it with a networking mindset. I'm here to meet people. I'm here to find out about them. I'm here to build relationships and I'm here to become more visible by doing so. But um, I'm not going to tell them how amazing I am. I'm not going to try and persuade them to do anything. I'm really just here to add value and be a good networker. I love this, Mark. So this is the mindset shift here is this isn't about making time for your marketing. This is about making time for relationships and developing existing relationships, I imagine, because a lot of people we likely know are already on there. And also developing and cultivating new relationships. So we're thinking about connecting with people. We're thinking about evolving a conversation with them, which, of course, may or may not lead to business. But it obviously, to your point there, grows our network on yeah. the business side of things. So with that in mind, let's talk about some of the concepts around what goes on on LinkedIn. To your earlier point there, you know, some people might take a quick look at LinkedIn and go, oh, I'm not sure that's for me. One of the concepts that comes to mind that I know people often struggle with, perhaps how to handle them, are the differences, for example, between company and personal profile pages for example. So can you teach us a little bit about what the difference is there and how we might be able to handle those? 
Yeah, I mean, this is an interesting point because especially with coaches who are often working for themselves, um, yeah, they get confused because they go, well, we can have a company page. I am the company. Um, we have personal page. Um, but I do want to develop a brand and I might want to grow this business. I might want to employ people in the future. So it's important to develop a, a corporate brand as well. So what do I do? Where do I put my time? Where do I put my energy? And the thing is, what you need to understand with anything any tool that you're working with is the company behind it and what they're trying to do. It's really important. People talk about algorithms on LinkedIn and trying to understand the algorithm and all this stuff. I, I don't really go on about that too much. I say to people, look, understand the company, understand what they're trying to do. And then you can work with this thing because at the end of the day, you don't try and work against the company that are running the site. Otherwise, you're always going to have problems. Good and that point. very much um, works with company pages and personal profiles because... The way LinkedIn use company pages is company pages is a bit like the way Facebook works. So it's a bit like they will give you a company page for free that you can, you know, create and put information in. And then you can do posts from there as well that and build followers and some of your followers will see your posts. And that all sounds great. But in reality, very few of your followers or anybody will see your posts. And the reason for that is that Company pages is the area where LinkedIn sells advertising. So the focus for LinkedIn is we want people to use their company page and we want them to get a little bit of coverage and a little bit of exposure, but we want them to be frustrated and go, oh, this isn't really working very well. What can I do in order to get more people to see my posts? And then LinkedIn will happily come along and say, well, we can sponsor those posts. It's going to cost you X amount of money. And on you go from there. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, that might be a good strategy for some people. But what is important to understand about that is that because of that, and because that's how LinkedIn see company pages and the way that they use them commercially, you're never, ever going to get consistently good results from posting from a company page because it's going to have restricted reach. Right. right. If it didn't have restricted reach, LinkedIn would never sell an ad. Right. So um, it makes no sense for them to do that. Now, personal profiles is a completely different ball game. The difference with LinkedIn and other social networks is they have a subscription model. And that subscription model is based around a product called Recruiter and another product called Sales Navigator. And both of those products, which, by the way, give them far more revenue than advertising, both of those products rely on a high number of active members and so if people are going to be active on linkedin there needs to be a reason for them to do so and that comes down to content and that comes down to content that they're going to see and therefore it's important for the subscription revenue for linkedin in order to have this other side of linkedin where people can get organic reach where people can build their visibility which is why when you compare the two there is really no comparison I'm not saying you shouldn't use a company page. You should, but understand its limitations. But spend the majority of your time and effort on your personal profile. Build a good profile. Build a good network by connecting with people and put out great content and engage with people through your personal profile. And that's where you start to build great visibility, great relationships, and that's where the opportunity exists for you. So there really is no comparison between the two. Oh, don't get me wrong, there are big companies out there that have marketing departments that focus on company pages quite heavily. Um, but even with those, you know, uh, if you look at someone like Microsoft, for instance, Satya Nadella, who's the CEO of um, Microsoft, gets much better results uh, from his post than the company do from theirs. And yet the company's got many, many more followers than, than he has. Um, and that's just one individual, right? The CEO of an organization. But if you had all the yeah. individuals in that organization, imagine the power that that gives the brand and that company through their activity. So, Yeah, that reach. Yeah, amazing. So that's really insightful, Mark. And uh, thank you so much for that clarity. I think that that's really going to help quite a number of people up to distinguish and understand the fundamental difference between those two types of, of pages. I've heard that the, I appreciate there are some paid subscription versions of LinkedIn that you can use, but I've heard there's a tremendous amount of power in, in just the free version. Perhaps you could speak to that a little bit. Sure. Well, I mean, the free version, it, it's free for everyone. Um, and uh, there's, there's actually no need to upgrade your account to premium. 
until you're in a position where you're a very experienced user, you're already getting great results from LinkedIn, you want to go the extra level. But I know lots of people that get great results from LinkedIn have never paid for it at all. I do pay for LinkedIn. I do have a Sales Navigator account. Um, that's partly because I train people to use Sales Navigator. But I, I think it's a good tool. And if you're a recruiter, recruiter's a good tool as well. There are certain advantages to upgrading your account, but they're not necessary. They're not things that are fundamental to your success on LinkedIn. And that's important to LinkedIn, as I say, because that kind of freemium model is critical for them. They need people to want to use it. The level of activity, the amount of time people spend on LinkedIn is critical to their success of their subscription products, if you like. So it's always a balance between the two for them, but they, they are still providing a product that allows us to do an awful lot without having to pay for it at all. Okay, that's great. So this series is Make Time for Marketing. It perhaps should be, to, in today's episode, Make Time for Networking. <laughs> but um, let's get into some of the fundamentals that you mentioned there. What are some of your uh, top tips and sort of best practices when it comes to firstly putting a profile together? Let's start there. Yeah, I mean, a profile is very important. I mean, it's fairly... Um, obvious stuff with the profile really but it's important to get it right to start with and you know to keep it updated uh, from time to time but for most people it's about half an hour's work to get your profile up to speed good profile picture a good headline which is the bit that sits underneath your name uh, you've got 220 characters to work with there they are keyword sensitive for search should somebody be searching for you uh, but more important than that they need to identify very quickly who you are and what you offer um, you can be quite salesy in a headline if you wish, but don't write a long sentence. Um, although you've got 220 characters, it's best to be punchy. It's like bullet points, really. This is what I do. These are my specialist areas. And maybe a call to action in there can be a good idea as well. So you're just giving people guidance on when they come across you, what to do. Is it to download something? Is it to contact you? Is it What is it? On mine, I just say, send me a direct message if you want to know more about, right? Then you've got, there's a whole rust of sections and, you know, I, I, I spend a lot of time talking about it, but we won't go into all that detail. But if you get profile picture right, get your headline right, make sure that there's comprehensive information in your profile in terms of your background. Don't hide background. You know, let's say you used to work in retail and now you're a coach and, you know, you don't necessarily work with people in retail. Don't hide it, you know. People work with people and people want to know about your background. They want to understand your story as to how you got to where you are today. So don't think about relevance. It is relevant because it's you and it's your story and it's how you got to where you are today. And people want to know that. If they're going to get close to you and trust you and want to work with you, they need to know your story. So just, just be very authentic, very open, give people good information so they can fully check you out. Yeah, we all check people out on LinkedIn. It's just commonplace, right? It's not stalking. It's, it's uh, research. Right? <laughs> uh, everyone does it. <laughs> yeah. Accept it, understand it and buy into it. You want people to check you out. So just give them good information in your profile. That's great. Moving on to the network, which is critical, who you connect with and how you build a network. When you first start on LinkedIn, you need to put some effort into that. And that starts with connecting with people that you already know and then getting active on LinkedIn. And as you build your activity, and I'll come on to the type of activity in a second, as you build your activity, that gives you an opportunity to engage with people. And when you engage with people, then you connect with them. All right. So initially, a big push, you're very much going out and knocking on doors and saying, hey, I don't know if you remember me from, let's connect. And then you start getting active, um, engaging with content. And then as you engage with people through that content, you then connect with them and build it that way. Eventually, you get to a point where actually you don't really want to connect with anybody else, um, although you probably will, but you actually want followers. And there's a difference between a connection of follow. Every connection is a follower by default, but people can choose to just follow you. In fact, you can make it that your primary option on your profile is to follow you rather than connect with you. But they can still connect with you if they wish. And that's a good thing. So you want to be building your followers. You know, if you could get twice as many followers as you've got connections, um, then you get in somewhere because that shows people are really interested in you. And some people will invite you to connect and you might decide that's not someone that I would want to connect with, but I wouldn't mind them as a follower. And that's OK, because if you ignore, which is basically not ignoring, but actually clicking on ignore um, their invite, then they become a follower by default these days. Uh, so people inviting you 
because they want to see your content. They don't quite understand that they can see it just by following you. All you need to do is reject it by saying, by clicking on ignore, and then they become a follower. So you're building something through that. And then the bit about content. So content's really important. It's probably the single best way to raise visibility amongst the marketplace of people that you want to do business with. And the way you do that is by making sure that you spend probably at least five times the amount of time you spend on posting and engaging with other people's content. So go back to that networking analogy. You're a good networker. You work the room. You ask people questions. You find out about them. You engage with them on their terms. And sometimes you will post yourself. You'll have something to say yourself. So roughly, I mean, some people will even say 10 times the amount of engagement than posting. I would say roughly about five times. But if you keep that balance right, then you'll always get somewhere. A few do's and don'ts for you, which might help in terms of content. Yeah. Um, this is a big subject and we won't have the time to go into huge detail on this. So perhaps if I just focus on do's and don'ts, really. Perfect. So when you're posting, try to avoid posting external links, links to anything inside or outside LinkedIn, actually. So it's external links, any link, any URL. The reason for that is it's got nothing to do with the algorithm. People think, oh, LinkedIn don't want you to put something that's going to send people away from LinkedIn. That's not actually true. Uh, it might have been in the past, but it's definitely not true now. What you don't want to do in a post is give people a reason to not engage with your post. When you think about it, if you see an interesting article and you post that on LinkedIn and I see it, what am I supposed to do? You know, logically, you've given me a link. It looks interesting. I'll click on it. Did I like your post? Did I comment on your post? No, because that wasn't that wasn't in the forefront of my mind. Why would it be? You've given me something that looks interesting. I'm going to go and click on it. Mm. The main way that your posts are distributed, the main way that you get reach, organic reach, is through engagement on your content. So your number one aim is that you want people to comment on your post. Now, if they're not going to comment on your post, you at least want them to like it. OK. Second uh, don't is resharing. I recently changed this feature, but reshares do not work well on LinkedIn. And what I mean by that is that you see someone's post and you click on where it says reshare and you reshare it. Maybe add a bit of commentary above it yourself, but it's their post showing to your followers with your commentary on the top. And effectively, it becomes your post, which is a reshare of their post. It's a very common thing across all social media. But on LinkedIn, it does not work. And the LinkedIn community do not like it. Okay, Again, it's not the algorithm. Uh, LinkedIn want you to reshare stuff. Um, that's why they've got the facility. But we don't seem to like it for some reason. It seems secondhand. I mean, we can analyze the reasons why. It doesn't really matter. The bottom line is, show me a reshare that works well. And uh, it's, a, it's like hen's teeth. Honestly, very, very rare. Now, they've actually changed that recently. So you've got another option, which is repost. It all gets a bit complicated with this terminology. Repost actually just does the same as a like, i.e. it puts it on the homepage feed of some of your followers, right? That's it. So you don't do anything. You don't type anything. It just puts the original post there. The original poster gets all the credit for it. Right? So any engagement that subsequently happens, they get the benefit of that. And that's a far better thing to do. OK, now just a quick point on that, actually, someone identified this to me recently is a good idea is that if you want to think of good content for your company page, these days you can post from your company page all right, and you can repost from your company page. So, so for instance, you see a post and you go or even do a post yourself all right? or a member of staff does a post if you've got employees. And then you go to that post and you change the thing so that you're not posting as yourself, you're posting as your company and you go repost. OK, and what that does is it puts your employees or your personal content onto your company page. Now, most companies do it the other way around. They go, here's a company page post and they ask their employees to reshare it. Right? That doesn't work for either party, either the company or the individuals. But when you do it that way around, you're actually putting good content on a company page, content that people want to see. So you've got a better chance. As I say, it's restricted, but you've got a better chance. So reposting is good. I'm not totally convinced it's that much better than liking or any other type of reaction as yet. It's a fairly new feature, so we'll have to wait and see. But don't reshare. 
Promotional stuff. Um, be careful. I know people and seen people many times that promote on LinkedIn and do it successfully. But the thing is that other people look at that and they go, oh, I'll do the same. And then it fails. And the reason why it fails for the majority is that what they haven't done is built a relationship with their audience. Your audience needs to be invested in you in order to respond well to your promotional material. OK, and even when you have an engaged audience that are invested in you, it should be no more than 20 percent of your content would be promotional in any way. And the same applies to what I call self-serving content. So self-serving, slightly different from promotional, and it might be you just talking about how good you are or that you've won an award. or So you're not directly promoting, kind of indirectly, but talking about you or your company. And other people just read that as being self-serving. And again, we don't want to see the majority of your content like that. You, you won't get good results. So there are a few don'ts for you. A few do's, though. Some of these are a bit more obvious than others. The first one isn't so obvious, although if you spend any time on LinkedIn, you'll start to see it more and more. And that's getting personal with your content. I don't mean necessarily talking about what you do at the weekend, but I do mean that whatever subject you are talking about, do it in a personal way. Personalize your content. So you're always approaching everything from the perspective of you. It might be that you want to talk about X and you think about, well, when did this happen to me? Can I relate a story or a time when this happened to me? And when you relate it that way, then your audience will respond much better to it. Time and time again, we see the content that does well on LinkedIn is content that is personal. Now, some people are more comfortable with being very personal. Um, and that's entirely up to each individual. I'm not against or for that necessarily. What I am for is people always being authentic and showing their personality and their character in the way that they post. OK, that works really well. There's all kinds of different posts you can do on LinkedIn from video. There's a new thing called carousel posts that are just coming in. You've got document posts, you've got image posts, uh, you've got text only posts. Um, it's a whole range of different types of posts. Don't stick to one. Uh, vary it. Keep changing what you do. Different people respond to different things. As I've already mentioned, engage more than you post five times more. So that's a do. And then the final one I'll give you is post about topics that are genuinely interesting to your target audience. And to do that, of course, you need to know your target audience. And if you don't, then you need to stop and take time to get to know your audience. And of course, if you are engaging five times more than you're posting, that actually comes quite naturally. You start to understand that really well. What you're doing is posting for them, not for you. When you post, though, the bit that is for you is that because you're posting content that is interesting to them, your aim of that content is to start a conversation. So you're never just putting something out that people could just look at and go, oh, OK, and move on. You really want to do something that gets them to want to comment. Now, that can be a whole range of things from something that might be a little bit controversial, might be a bit of digging the ribs, might be opinionated, showing your personality. A lot of people are scared to do that because they think they're going to put some people off. The reality is you're never going to do business with absolutely everybody that you potentially could do business with. If you look at all of your potential clients out there, there's only going to be a percentage. They're going to be the kind of people that want to do business with you. The more authentic you are, the more real you are, the more those people that gravitate to you will want to do business with you. And those people that don't, you're not their cup of tea, will move away from you. And you need to be comfortable with that and understand that with your content. Start conversations, be authentic, be personal, be real. And through that, you tend to find that people will start to gravitate towards you and they're the kind of people that you want to do business with and want to do business with you. So there's a few do and don'ts that might be helpful in terms of content. That's great, Mark. There's a lot in there. And I would urge our listener to, to rewind, go back and have another listen to some of the 
do's and don'ts there that Mark's very kindly shared with us. I will definitely be doing that and making some notes as well. And some powerful insights there too in terms of, and powerful tips even, to be clear about who we're talking to and if we're not, figuring that out so that we can then start to tailor what it is that we've got to share, that personalized content that you're talking about there, Mark, in a way that uh, strikes up a conversation with those that we're trying to to connect with and, and reach. So, uh, yeah, some really great stuff in there. It might be worth just quickly uh, touching upon this. I know more recently there's been something called Creator Mode. Uh, introduced mm. onto LinkedIn. And I, that might be something that, that those interested in coaching and coaches uh, are, are looking to use. Could you just briefly describe a little bit about what that is and whether that's something that's worth looking at? Okay, it's um, it's fairly new. Not everybody will have access to it. If you are given access to it, um, you should consider it quite seriously. Basically, LinkedIn have realised, it's taken them a long time to get their head around this, but they've realised that the way that they're going to get people on the platform and keep them on the platform and keep their sessions longer or make their sessions longer, session times longer, is through content. And that content will come from members, users of LinkedIn. And so what they're trying to do is encourage people to put out more content, better content. And through that, they've done this thing called creator mode. Creator mode does a few things that it changes about your profile. Slight, slightly change to the order of the way your profile looks. It also changes your primary button from connect to follow. Okay, so you if you haven't built a network of people that you've connected with um, and that's not strong enough yet, then perhaps creator mode's not right for you just yet. It might be something you do a little bit later on. But the great thing about creator mode, and increasingly we're finding this is the more and more is going to be the case in the future as well, is that what they're doing is a lot of the features they're bringing out, a lot of the really interesting stuff, like things like audio live, live stream video, all of these things they're allowing only to creators. And a lot of features that they're bringing out, initially creators get them and then everybody else gets them later on. So you are the favoured few, if you like, if you are in this creator mode scenario. Now, it, it, does it particularly help in terms of content distribution? It's too early to say. I, I actually just this morning read a report from someone that is saying that they think it actually does make a difference in terms of the... So if you are creator mode then there's a better chance that your content is going to be seen by more people, okay? Now, there's a lot of things that affect that, and it may not be just the creator mode. You know, for instance, things like you may get more followers um, because you've got more followers or your follower growth has been greater because follower is your primary option. Then the algorithm takes notice of that and will say, okay, we're going to push this content out to more people, et cetera, et cetera. Whole load of things on the fringes of creator mode that might also affect that. But generally speaking, I would say it's a good thing. And if you are in a position where you are committed to putting out content and you see that as something that you are going to do and want to get better at doing, then creator mode is probably for you, provided you have a decent network already. That's great. Thanks for that insight, Mark. I know a couple of people have been talking about that. So it's lovely to understand a little bit more about what that feature is. And um, if you are one of the lucky few, as you say, that has it, then maybe that's something that's worth uh, spending a bit of time with. And on that note, for most people and your experience as a trainer and working with other people on, on their LinkedIn strategy, if you like, what would you say is a good amount of time to spend on LinkedIn each day and each week? Yeah, it's, it's a really hard question to answer because in many respects, it would be a cop out to say, oh, an hour a day or something like that. Yeah. Really how any social network operates, really. And um, it's never as simple as that. And the bottom line is, ideally, if you can try and get to a position where you can comfortably post two to three times a week. Now, I'm not saying that would be something that you have to just dive into immediately. It might be that you start with one a fortnight, then one a week, then two a week, and then get up to three a week. Um, and don't beat yourself up if one week you do one or two. It's not the end of the world. Um, 
remembering that you're doing five times the amount of engagement than you are posting. So, you know, if you're going to be posting three times a week, that means there are 15 posts from different people, ideally, that you are going to be commenting on. So you need to be looking at LinkedIn on a daily basis in order to achieve that. And if your posts do well, of course, what you find is that that takes more of your time because people are going to comment on your posts, which is what you want. And you need to reply to that comment and also potentially connect with those people and build a relationship with them. So the thing about it all is, though, you know, people talk about, have I really got time for this? That is a question that people that aren't successful with LinkedIn ask. Well, you talk to someone that's doing a great job and, you know, generating lots of business from LinkedIn. I don't think about it. It's not it's a bit like, you know, walking past that room analogy that I was talking about before. It's like once you're in the room, you're not looking at your watch. You're not going, oh, have I really got time for this? It doesn't even enter your head because you're like, yeah. hold on a second, I'm talking to customers. This is great. This is my job. That's what I do. You know, I'm yeah. supposed to be talking to these people. I'm not thinking to myself, oh, that's my hour up. I must go. <laughs> All right, if you've got an appointment to go to. But, yeah, sure. you know, so, so don't think that way. Think, look, you know, I, I've got to put a bit of effort into this for sure. You know, it's not going to happen unless I do. Um, but if I do the right things and I gradually build up and dive in with two feet, but gradually build it up, then what I'll find is that, you know, I'm starting to get somewhere and I'm starting to win a few customers. I'm starting to get referred. And this is good stuff. So you don't even think about it in terms of, well, can I dedicate more time to this? You just naturally will do because it's working, you know. The thing that the mistake people make is they dive in with two feet and then go, well, I've spent all this time on LinkedIn and I've got nothing. You know, take it slowly, gradually build it up and do more as you achieve more. And through that, you'll start to uh, very few people that I've come across that don't get great success. If they do the right things and they gradually work their way into it, then the success comes. And it's not really then a thing of have I got time for it? It's, it's easy to find time for it. That's great, Mark. And uh, I have to say, these last 40 minutes or so have just flown by and uh, I've got lots of notes here and um, I'll certainly be listening to this episode again just to make sure it's going in properly. Um, so yeah. thank you for sharing your time with us today. Before we wrap up, um, have you got any sort of final tips and resources perhaps that our listener could go and take a look at? And uh, where can they connect with you, of course, other than LinkedIn to find out more about what you do with LinkedIn and perhaps connect with you? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn and follow me on LinkedIn. That That's by far the best place. Um, and certainly in terms of resources, there's plenty of resources, both in my profile and through following me. I have a newsletter on LinkedIn, which, you know, every week there's content going out from that. But if you're a podcast listener, presumably you are, <laughs> <laughs> then, um, then I have a podcast which is called LinkedIn Forms. So that's all one word, LinkedIn Formed. And uh, we're up to episode I'm just about to record this week, episode 366. Wow. Um, so it's been going a long time. And yeah. uh, we have a, a loyal and growing audience of people. And the best way to describe a typical LinkedIn formed listener would be an enthusiast or someone that's becoming an enthusiast. So curious, want to know more. Uh, every week I will talk about anything that's new. It's not an interview show, so occasionally yeah. I might bring uh, a guest on, but that's not the normal format. The normal format is me talking about, and I, I could pick a subject like, you know, let's talk about how we invite people or something like that to connect. But often it will be commentary on what's going on and why this is happening and how we can consider this change and how we perhaps what ought to be adjusting our behavior because of the things that are going on on LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's probably the best resource in terms of, you know, the ability to be able to listen to something, to get inspiration and ideas around that. It's a fairly kind of casual style. It's not a formal kind of training podcast as such. Um, it's me chatting away uh, to the audience about all things LinkedIn. Brilliant, Mark. And well done on 366 episodes. That's uh, pretty amazing. Um, out of that, obviously, there's a wealth of content there, which our listener might at first be a little bit overwhelmed with. Are there any particular episodes that are worth to begin with just to get stuck in and, and, and maybe sample your content or a good place to start? Yeah, um, there is uh, there's so many, but uh, there's one that stands out in my head where we talked about content with a guy 
Um, this was an interview uh, one. It's actually two episodes. I broke it down into two episodes where we talked about this. There's a guy who runs a business called Shield, which is a LinkedIn analytics company. And um, what was interesting is that he was given an aspect of coming across with this information that was backed up by numbers because he's got thousands of users and they're able to analyze their posts and look at the data. Now, I don't have the number off the top of my head of that episode, but I could certainly give it to you and you can maybe put a link to it in, in the show notes or something like that. We'll do that. Um, but uh, that was quite a fascinating insight as opposed to, because we're all guessing at this, you know, yeah. it's the nature of what it is. And we try things. And of course, not everything is going to work in our market just because it works for other people isn't going to necessarily work for us. And the great thing about that was that uh, we were looking at data across a, a wide variety of, uh, of users and thousands of users. And, and it was a very interesting insight to, uh, to that. And that may help some people and, and be an interesting starting point, I think. Brilliant. Well, thanks ever so much for that tip, Mark. And of course, all of your tips and insights today. It's been absolutely fascinating to learn more about LinkedIn. And uh, for our listener, we'll put those links and the link to the episode that Mark mentioned on the show notes, which you can find on the associationforcoaching.com. Just go and have a look for the podcast there and look for Mark under the Make Time for Marketing series. Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you again for your time and wisdom. My pleasure. It's been, been a lot of fun. Thanks. Thanks for listening to another podcast by the Association for Coaching. I'm Rob Lawrence. For 20 years, the AC's purpose has been to inspire and champion coaching excellence, advance the coaching profession, and make a sustainable difference to individuals, organisations, and societies worldwide. To find out more about the Association for Coaching and our member benefits, follow us on LinkedIn or explore our website at associationforcoaching.com. You can keep up to date with our latest podcast episodes, enjoy the wealth of digital learning offerings and gain insights from our Coaching Perspectives magazine.